A ground map is normally one of the first steps in a mapping process. It is particularly useful for gaining an idea of the extent of a community's land and resource use and to initiate discussions about land-related issues. It is also a fun way to stimulate participation and increase community confidence in the mapping project, as well as a useful tool to help plan for any further field-based mapping activities. A ground map is drawn from memory directly onto the ground using available materials. There is no specific way to do this, but generally you could start by helping the community to list the information they want to include in their map. Once this is done, find a large open space in the village so that everyone in the community will be able to see, comment and participate in the drawing of the map. Ask a member of the community to place an object to represent a central landmark, such as the village or the central house, depending on the scale and nature of the map. Next, ask the villagers to draw other important landmarks, such as a nearby river or road and then progressively add levels of detail, such as hunting camps, sacred areas or plantations. Of course, what the community decides to include in the map will depend on what the objective of the exercise is. To help create a map which represents the entire community, the facilitator should make a special effort to ensure that as much of the community participates as possible. In some cases, it is better to work separately with different groups, such as women and indigenous peoples, who may be less likely to speak out in front of others, as long as an overall map can later be put together. While the process is ongoing, another facilitator should take notes on the place names, stories or important issues raised during the exercise, which can later be brought up in discussion and included in mapping reports. Especially in cases where there are a large number of people, it is useful to have a third or fourth person to provide general support and to ensure that the data collected is correct and includes everybody's contributions. Once the ground map has been completed, it can be transferred onto a sketch map for permanent record. It is usually best to use A1 size so that sufficient detail can be added. Draw in pencil first so that any mistakes can be corrected or additions made. During this phase, the community will need to decide on a legend for the different symbols and colours to include on their map. When well done, sketch maps can represent a highly detailed and graphic vision of a landscape from the community's perspective that can have a number of important applications. In some cases, where cartographic accuracy isn't required, they may be sufficient to highlight a particular problem to the relevant authorities, but normally they are used to gain a picture of land-related issues on which to plan further mapping or other activities. Once completed, the map and any accompanying notes should be presented to the community by the local mappers for input and to ensure that the information is correct. It is good practice to produce a replica map so that the community may keep a record of their work. Allez, 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 allez,